Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Lisa and in this video we're going to talk through how I've completed this wombat with colour pencils. If you like this video remember to like and subscribe and if you feel like you'd like to give this one a go you can check me out on Patreon where this is a real time tutorial. You'll be given the colour list, line art, reference photo, everything you need to complete this all by yourself along with real time instructions where I let you know how to complete this all by yourself. So let's get started. So usually I always start with the eye and this one was very very dark but in the middle there was a bit of blue so we've gone in with some of the light ultramarine. This wombat had a lot of cool and warm greys in there so I was using some of the warm greys and some of the cold greys. For the bluer colours I was using the light ultramarine and also some phaleo blue and then building up with the cold grey 3 and warm grey 5 then going into the black and darkening things up by mixing all these colors together. At the start here I was thinking that I would just blend the pencils together sort of using the burnishing method or just a blending with the pencils but then I sort of felt like I wasn't getting the coverage that I needed for this fur especially sort of above the eye where it's um, sort of black and white sort of fur so then I did go in with a color pencil solvent. The one that I use is Zest It Pencil Blend and I just used a large watercolor brush. You just want to make sure that you're not going in with too much solvent on your brush otherwise you'll just push all the pigment all over the page. So then for this second section I decided I wanted to go in put down a base layer of the cold grays some of the under colors and get in a little bit of a base and then go through with the solvent blend it all down and then go over with some darker sections. So the good thing about doing this is that once you have your base layer down and you've blended it with the solvent it's pretty much stuck to the page so you can't really get this up so you want to make sure that it's correct. Then when you go over with your darker colors you can go put more layers and it'll just feel like there's no other layers on there. So then where there are sort of lighter sections you can go in with your slice tool and just start to slice off some of the lead that you've put down to put in those lighter hairs and that will help give the impression that there are whiter hairs overlapping the darker sections which is just sort of what we sort of want. So it is really important to make sure that you're going in with a sharp pencil for your darker layers so you can get down those really fine fur lines but then if you do go too dark in a section we can always just use the slice tool to slice away some of these. So the combination of mixing the fur lines, blending it all down with the lighter layers and then adding those darker layers over and then using the slice tool and you can even go back over it if you like with the slice tool and this will all just help to the thickness of the layer. So you really just want to be adding a couple of layers to make the fur look nice and thick so for this nose I used some of the cold grey one, the warm grey one in the warmer areas and then went in with the cold grey 3, also added some of the light ultramarine and that's where the blue tone comes from. Then you just need a really really sharp black pencil and you can go in and start putting in sort of little hexagons or little circles and this will give you the texture that you see on the nose. Then you can go over with your greys and just blend them down a little bit and then go through and start to emphasize some of the other black areas and then start to emphasize some of the lighter areas on the nose and all of those little indents that you can see with the black pencil. Make sure your pencil is really really sharp because you need to get in those really little details. But this sort of fur can be very tricky and it does take a little while to learn so don't be disheartened if you're sort of getting through it and it doesn't look like it's working it just means that you need to continue going every piece goes through an ugly stage at some point and you just need to push through and keep going now for the browner colors that are in there i use some of the bista and then where it's sort of a ready brown i use some of the caput mortem and this was even used in the bottom of the nose as well and then I use some of the Van Dyke Brown. I really feel like the cold and warm greys go really well with Van Dyke Brown and it's a very sort of natural woody color that really goes with great Aussie animals like this. So these clumps on the fur where it came to putting in the darkest section and then building this up, you can see that this section took me quite a long time. So it's just a matter of putting in some layers, stepping back, seeing how it looked, 
putting in more layers and then I used the slice tool to scrape some things away, went over with more layers and then scrape some more layers away. So it's not a matter of just going in and putting one section and saying that it's not working out or it's done. You need to go in and do a few sort of layers, really sort of step back and see which way the furs are going and how long they are and make sure that you're depicting this with your pencils on the page. One of the pencils that was great for this was also the Cold Grey 3. This was sort of the mid-tone which really helped blend the lighter and darker areas together. So you could put in the darker tones and then use the Cold Grey 3 just to blend these out and into the lighter highlight sections. And then using the slice tool from the cold grey 3 area into the black areas makes it look like the white hairs are sort of overlapping and you have a lot of layers in there, which is exactly what you need for this sort of thing because it's such sort of short, thick fur for this guy. So underneath the chin and also underneath the nose, I did go in with an embossing tool. So the embossing tool is just like a metal um, pen sort of thing that you go in and indent the paper. So when you want to keep areas really, really light, such as furs or whiskers and things like that, you can put in the embossing tool just the same way that you do put in sort of a fur texture. Underneath the chin, you can sort of see where the embossed lines are. I did go a little bit too overboard with these ones under the chin, so I had to sort of blend my pencils over it. Um, to blend it in a little bit better. The embossing tool is a great way to ensure that you leave sort of really light whiskers and hairs that will sort of add to the thickness of the fur as well. So now moving on to the background, I just broke it up into three different sections to do the background. I do talk a lot about this on Patreon in the real-time tutorial about how to do a background and make sure that you're not putting in really sharp pencil strokes because you want it to be blurry. So the way to do that is just to put your pencil on the side and really softly just glaze down or shade down your color. If you want to go darker in certain areas, you just need to go over and put more layers down. Don't go in with a harder pressure because you may get really firm pencil strokes in there, which will make it look unrealistic. So for the background, you can see that there are a lot of sort of blurry areas. So you want to make sure that you're depicting this with your pencil by really going in softly and just building up the layers really really slightly. So what I did was went into each of the three sections, put down the base layers with all the colors and then blended it down with the solvent. Usually need to wait about 10 or 15 minutes for the solvent to dry. So while we were doing this we just move on to the next section and then go back up to the top to add in more color and darken everything out. So for the browner, darker browner areas, I was using the warm grey 5 to sort of blend everything down and in the lighter areas I was using the cold grey 3 to blend everything down. And then I did also go in with my Luminance blender pencil. So this is just like a colourless pencil. You do need to use quite a hard pressure. So once you sort of use this blender pencil, you need to sort of accept the fact that you're not going to be able to put many more layers over, if any at all. So you really need to make sure that you're ready to blend everything down and you're happy with the colours and everything. So it's just really something that you do at the very end. But every artist is different and every piece is going to be different. So that depends also on the type of paper that you're using. So sometimes you may find that you don't need to blend as much as what I have for this piece, but it just sort of depends on the paper that you're using and all of the materials and everything like that as well. There's no sort of right and wrong way of doing these things. If you're happy with the way that it looks and the way that it comes out, that's all that really matters. Everyone has their own way of doing things and that's fine. Remember as well with all my tutorials, I always say that you don't need the same materials and colors that I use. You can always use different colors or different materials. Any way that you like to do it is gonna be okay. You just need to see what works for you. Making sure that you have a really good outline down is really great for this sort of thing because it makes it a little bit easier to sort of see where everything is and where everything goes. But also if you're sort of putting leaves or sticks or branches in the wrong place, no one's going to know. So nature is very different. 
backgrounds are very different and no one's going to know if everything is in the wrong spot. So you just need to have a look at your reference photo, be happy with what you're doing. It doesn't need to be 100% perfect when it comes to like pet portraits and animals that people sort of love and know, then it really makes a difference. But for sort of wild animals like this, no one's going to know if, you know, you have a whisker out of place or if the background is a little bit different. Then when I get to the end of a piece, I just like to leave it for a day or two and then come back and make any changes that I think. I think I spent about 45 minutes going over and just adding little bits and pieces here and changing a few things. But I really hope that you like this video. Remember to like and subscribe. If you're interested in trying this one, check me out on Patreon. Time to take off the tape and this is the final result. Thanks guys.